Hello and welcome to a Minecraft video. I'm Scooter Buyo playing Vanilla Minecraft 1.8.7 PC Edition, and this is the tenth in a series of videos in which I conquer an ocean monument. Uh, in this video, I will be demonstrating how to remove the water from the treasure room of an ocean monument. Uh, but if you're looking for another part of the strategy in action, a link to the other videos in this series can be found in the description. Uh, so the, the treasure room is actually the largest room of the uh, Ocean Monuments maze. Uh, a couple of the other rooms that uh, I demonstrated how to drain, they were four units large. The treasure room is eight units large, so double that. Uh, it's got enough volume of water in it that um, a significant number of guardians can spawn in here. Uh, even though most of the, uh, the cover is in place, so most of the guardian spawning is actually occurring on the outside of the monument. Uh, so, uh, in draining this guy, the first thing I'm going to want to do is establish a safe position in the treasure room. And, and it turns out the safest position in the treasure room is actually right underneath that uh, uh, um, big block of dark prismarine there. Uh, so I'm going to come in through uh, one of the other rooms, and I'm just going to swim down under here. And I'm going to place doors all around me. And then I'm going to hit the floor with a dry sponge. That will soak up all of the water. I'll have light from these sea lanterns in the corners here. And now I can pretty much uh, um, I have a nice area from which I can finish the uh, draining work uh, of this area. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, so following standard procedure, I'm going to want to seal off this room. Uh, now, sealing off the treasure room can be a little tricky um, for a couple of different reasons. One, it, there are potentially a large number of rooms adjacent to a large number of openings, uh, and all of these are going to have to be sealed off. Um, so these bricks here on this, uh, on this outer layer... These bricks, they are not part of the generation of the treasure room. These are actually um, uh, walls uh, of the, um, and in, this, in the case of the prismarine down here, uh, floors of, the, uh, of adjacent rooms. So these, uh, these uh, may not be in this specific configuration, um, but uh, I just put them there uh, so I have something to work with here. Uh, these might already be blocked off as part of draining the adjacent rooms here, um, since, these, uh, since these bricks actually uh, belong to those other rooms. Um, so I'm going to block all of those off there. I'm going to block all of these off here. Okay, and um, now over here, there's nothing that needs to be blocked off. This is the back of the treasure room. Uh, some of these bricks are actually um, the back of the ocean monument. Uh, over here is the more interesting case. Um, uh, in, uh, this is what you would see if the treasure room generates in the back corner uh, of an ocean monument. Uh, and that's because there are no adjacent rooms here uh, next to this. This is where the lower passageway would generate, um, it, which leaves these really large open areas uh, into the treasure room. And these are still going to have to be blocked off before draining the treasure room. Uh, so I'm going to have to create an artificial wall uh, um, uh, against the lower passageway there um, uh, before draining the treasure room. Uh, and what I like to do is just lay down a line of doors and then lay down a line of cobblestone on top of those doors and then swim up here and lay down another line of doors. And, and that will block off the whole, uh, that whole large uh, open area there. So a line of doors, uh, place a cobblestone on top of the door here. and swim up and just place a line of doors. Uh, and now the room is all closed off, uh, ready to be partitioned. Uh, so if I'm uh, down under, under here, getting ready to partition the, um, uh, uh, partition the uh, treasure room for draining, uh, probably uh, I'm, uh, even, before I, uh, uh, even before I block anything off, if there's still things left to be blocked off, I'm going to want to put a little bit of light down. Uh, it turns out that these, uh, these little prismarine, this uh, angle of prismarine bricks that generates, it's a nice place to put a jack-o'-lantern, um, provides a decent amount of light in the area. So I'd add one of those uh, all around in here. 
it's still going to be a little dark. It's it's hard to necessarily see where there are openings. Um, there's not necessarily an opening in each one of these locations. Sometimes it's just a wall. Uh, so it probably we'll take a little bit of exploration, maybe a few more jack-o'-lanterns placed around. Um, and over here can sometimes be difficult to uh, to seal off um, uh, if there are guardians around, uh, but it's not too bad. Uh, once all of uh, once all of the prep work here is in place, then uh, I can start um, I can start segmenting this room. Uh, it is really large. It it's not a good idea to try to drain this without uh, partitioning it first. Um, the partitions are just much easier to to drain. Uh, and these um, uh, these kind of uh, beams of prismarine bricks make really nice guides for where to divide this room. Uh, and uh, the, so that means I'm going to have uh, smaller sections all the way around this uh, uh, block of prismarine bricks here. Now, if you see the beams kind of connect at this column of prismarine bricks, and it comes all the way down here all on the corner of the dark uh, block of prismarine there, and there's a gap right there at the bottom. So I'm going to start with that gap, and I'm going to place a block of sand right in the gap, and then from that block of sand in both directions, uh, I'm going to place a line of sand. So all the way over to the side. And I'm going to do that in, uh, in all four, uh, under all four of the corners there. I don't have to do this all at once. Um, I could uh, create some uh, sections and then drain those and move on and then move on to the next but I'm just putting down all the sand here. Okay, so um, we can see that the sand down there really sort of mirrors the beams of prismarine bricks on the ceiling there. And uh, I, I can place then uh, um, uh, sugar canes all the way up to these beams from the sand. Uh, this uh, room is not filled with water, so I'm using uh, lime stained glass as a stand-in for uh, sugar canes. We just add uh, sugar canes uh, all the way up, uh, and these are not really too ho too difficult to add. Um, it's uh, pretty easy to um, uh, to place these on while you're swimming around. Uh, just duck inside them in order to uh, replenish your air meter, and uh, if there are any guardians around that target you, you can always just sort of swim through the other side of the sugar canes in order to uh, break off the attack. Okay, so uh, that's uh, that's one uh, one of the four corners done. Um, as you can see, if I uh, add uh, sugar canes on each of the uh, other three corners, which I'll do in a moment, um, I'll, I'll have partitioned this room into eight sections, uh, nine if you include the uh, include the top here. So uh, I'm going to uh, go ahead and add in my fake sugar canes, uh, and I'll see you back in just a second. Okay, I've got all of my fake sugar canes in place here. Uh, a, a quick note, um, I started off with three stacks of sugar canes, uh, and uh, that's 192 sugar canes in total. I, I left four on the outside of the monument as part of killing the Elder Guardians, um, which means I have 188 sugar canes in my inventory if I haven't lost any. Um, and all told here, there's 190 sugar canes in place, so I would be too short, uh, two sugar canes short, to segment this whole thing all at once. Uh, but again, it doesn't have to be done all at once. Um, you can uh, do the, you can place down sugar canes for this section uh, and uh, for this corner over here, and then you could uh, drain these three sections and reclaim all of the sugar canes here. Uh, and here uh, before do, uh, before adding sugar canes in the other two corners. Um, so I, I still have enough sugar canes with me even though I don't have enough to do it all at once. So uh, Okay, so one, once all of the sugar canes are in place, uh, then I can go ahead and start draining the water individually from the uh, different sections. I'm going to start uh, with the back sections here. Uh, and uh, these uh, these corners are are pretty easy to drain. Um, the very in the, for all of the corners, the very first uh, uh, sponge that I'm going to set down is right at the corner where those prismarine uh, where those beams of prismarine bricks meet. So I'm going to place a sponge right there, and then on the opposite corner, one block down uh, from the ceiling, I'm going to place a sponge, and then. 
in the corner over here where the sand meets right under the first to sponge. I'm going to put another sponge down and that's it. That will soak up all the water of this section. And over here, uh, this is a, an identical configuration, just mirrored. And so I'm going to place the sponge up there, uh, opposite corner, one block down from the ceiling, and then in the corner where the sand meets. Uh, and that's all of the water of this section. Now for the corner sections in the front of the treasure room, I'm going to follow pretty much the same procedure. Um, a sponge where the beams of prismarine bricks meet, opposite corner, one block down from the ceiling, and then uh, where the sand meets right underneath the first sponge there. Now there's still going to be some water left in here because there's actually a larger volume of water in these front corners than there is in the back, uh, and that's because of the way in which um, uh, the, uh, these holes generate. They create additional volume of water here. So there's going to need to be one more sponge, and you can just place it in the opposite corner of this sponge from the sand right here. Uh, directly underneath the second sponge there. And that will soak up all of the water of this section. And this corner it has the uh, same, uh, same size and shape, so in the corner where the prismarine bricks meet, opposite corner, one block down from the ceiling, in the corner where the sand meets, uh, right, underneath the th right underneath the first sponge, and in the corner uh, right underneath the second sponge, and that's all of the water of this corner. Uh, so the remaining uh, sections are these side sections. Uh, these are all connected to each other. Um, they're connected underneath the block of prismarine bricks, but I have my doors here, so uh, there's no water that can actually flow between the sections. Um, uh, however, there still is water up here, and if I try to clear out this section, water that doesn't get cleaned up here will spill over here, and it will still create kind of a mess and, and just make it harder to drain. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by placing a block of cobblestone right there. And then I'm going to place a sponge right next to it. Okay, and that will not only soak up a good deal of water from this section, uh, but it will prevent water from up here from spilling back over into the section. So after I place the sponge up here, uh, I'm going to go to the wall opposite that first sponge, so just directly over in a line. And one block down from the ceiling, just uh, as I was doing for the corners, one block down from the ceiling, place the sponge on the wall. And then down here, right in front of this door, almost directly underneath that first sponge, and that is all the water of this section. And all four of the, uh, all four of the side sections have the same size and shape, uh, so I can follow the same, uh, same procedure for all four of them. Place a cobblestone there and a sponge right next to the cobblestone to block off uh, above the prismarine brick, uh, above the dark, uh, the block of dark prismarine. Opposite wall from that first sponge, one block down from the ceiling, and then right in front of the door uh, underneath the first sponge there. Block of cobblestone, sponge, wall opposite the first sponge, one block down from the ceiling, and right in front of the door. Last, uh, last section, block of cobblestone, sponge next to the cobblestone, wall opposite the first sponge, one block down from the ceiling, and right in front of the door. Uh, and that is all of the, uh, all of the water in the treasure room. Uh, it's been completely drained. Uh, I will have to do a little bit of cleanup, of course, remo removing the sand. Uh, most of the uh, sugar canes probably will have already popped out, uh, though some will be uh, sort of waiting for a block tick. Um, uh, but uh, uh, that's that's it. Um, this uh, I'm going to leave here. Uh, if uh, this uh, if the treasure room did uh, was adjacent to the lower passageway, uh, I would leave this here uh, until I drain the lower passageway, uh, and that will be in an upcoming video. Uh, that is it for this video. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a note in the comments.